Right. How are you doing, Wendy? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thanks. Um, I yeah. love Blush. I thought it was really great. And I thought your performance oh, was thanks. brilliant as well. Um, I you. was reading uh, initially that you didn't have a lot of time to prep for this. How was it going on to a project like this that required so much of you uh, without having the kind of time to really think about it and get your head into the right sort of mindset? Yeah, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. I had just come off of two other movies and I was exhausted. And I said to Deborah, um, if you want to recast me, you totally can. And she said, no, I don't want to recast you. That's ridiculous. Um, so I just kind of used that, that exhaustion and that bewilderment for the character. I think it kind of served it served the story a little bit, but um, yeah, it was, it was tough. It was like just being thrown into a boiling pot and then coming out three weeks later. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's like a, a blessing in disguise? Cause I guess we can, we can overthink things, can't we? I guess yes. maybe just going straight into the deep end might bring out a kind of instinctive side to you. And I guess in acting instinct yeah. can be quite a, a big part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think you hit the nail right on the head. It was a blessing that that happened and it caused me to just really listen and really just be in the moment with these characters. And um, you're right, because actors do tend to overthink things and nobody benefits from that. <laughs> Is the kind of suburban life one that you sort of know well? Or are you, are you a city dweller? Are you someone that's always lived and was raised in a city? Um, you know, I live 30 miles outside of Los Angeles. And I've never left. So I've grown up here and I've never left. Though the character that I play, though, she's someone that did live in the big city. And now she's kind of out in the suburbs a little bit. And she's going bananas. She's just itching from the inside of her skin. She doesn't know what to do. And she quit her job that she was really proud of to raise a family. And now that's not, no one needs her the way they used to. And that is a very painful time. And I've seen women go through this. And in Kathy's case, she starts self-medicating and self-helping, you know, with all that self-help nonsense um, that people use to mask what's really wrong. When all she needs to do, it's like the Wizard of Oz, click your heels, Dorothy. You've had the power all along. Like, you can get another job. You can, you can make things better. The power lies with you. Don't blame other people for things. Um, so yeah, that was really fun to play. And that is something that I see a lot. And I'm sure in the UK, you guys see it too. You've got those housewives shows and, you know, all those lady shows that show people, you know, trying to outspend each other and all that when, it's like, is that really making you happy? I don't think it is. And the thing is, it's funny because you say, because it is true that, that, that those kind of cultures and sort of mini societies, they are everywhere. And yet, having said mm -hmm. that, we don't see it represented or reflected that much in film, yeah. particularly not uh, uh, roles like this as the lead character. So when I yeah. saw this film, I felt like I hadn't seen a role like yours for some time in, in a kind of in a big kind of an, in an American production. Did you get yeah. that similar feeling when you met Deborah and spoke about this and got the script? Did it feel quite new and original to you? It did. And because originally I was brought on to play the sister role, the one whose cat dies, and <laughs> that whole terrible thing comes back with a boob job and all of that. Um, that's what I was originally supposed to play. And so when I would go to table reads for it, I would listen to this role of Kathy and I'm like, oh God, that's so juicy. That's so juicy. Oh, I would love to play this. And oh, that I, you know, I know women like that. Um, so when it came up and, and I got, you know, circumstances happened and I got moved into the lead, I was like, yes, yes. Oh, I can't wait to crush this, you know. Um, because I like to play people on the verge of losing their grip, you know, it's fun. It's fun for me. Um, but anyway, I don't know if that answered your question, but yeah, it's not something that you, that I've necessarily seen a lot or necessarily seen told in a truthful way. 
which is it kind of, that seems kind of mad really when you think about the fact that the people that the sort of character you're portraying is exactly the sort of person that would go to the cinema at the weekend and go to the theater <laughs> and, and watch movies so you know, it's quite surprising in some ways isn't it that there aren't enough yeah. made for that audience in that in a way yeah yeah, yeah that's true yeah. Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> but... <laughs> so you mentioned, obviously, you, you went for another role. Has that happened to you before in your career where you've gone in for a reading for one part and then left with, with another? Yes, yes. And that's, that's something that I wish more actors would understand is that just go to the audition. You're probably not going to get it, okay? 95% of the time, you're not going to get it. But they'll remember you for something else. Maybe in the same project, maybe in a completely different project. Just go and be good. That's your job, show up. You know, show up and show them what you can do. And um, yeah, it took me a long time to figure that out. But um, yeah, when I look back on it, most of the time I don't get what I'm auditioning for. I get something completely different and it always works out. I'm always happy, you know? Um, so how is it working with, with Deborah on, on this? Cause it's a, it's a, it's a really, it's a great project. You can, you know, when you get a sense for like a director's, you know, kind of approach and cinematic language, if you want to use that sort of yeah. term instantly, and you could really get a feel for, for what sort of filmmaker she was, uh, she is, sorry. Uh, what, what, yeah. what do you like to collaborate with? Um, well, first of all, Deborah is a really amazing writer. And she's, this is not her first feature film. I had gone back and watched a couple of her other films and um, there was one called Before the Sun Explodes and I watched it and it was so stylistic and beautiful that I was like, yes, okay, I'm in good hands. I'm in good hands, you know? A lot of times when someone is directing their own script, it, they become kind of precious with their own material. No, Deborah was like, let's serve the story. If some, if we're on our feet and we find a better way to do something, let's do that. So um, she's very collaborative because she's an actor herself. And um, I think she cast this thing perfectly. It was an absolute pleasure to work with her. And I, I bow down to her talent. I think she's such a phenomenal writer. Yeah, I mean, talking of casting, I thought Kate and Max were just brilliant. I mean, like, I know right. you get a lot of really talented young performers out there, but they, in this film, I was quite, I was quite taken aback by just the maturity in their performances. Yeah. Were they like that in real life? Did they feel like sort of kids who are sort of above their years? Oh, absolutely. I felt like the both of them were, I know this sounds so stupid and woo-woo to say, but like, oh, you guys have been here before on the planet. Like you have, you have things figured out. At no point when I was either of their ages was I so confident in my choices <laughs> that I would be able to deliver that kind of performance, those kinds of performances. Um, yeah, they were, they were phenomenal. And especially Kate, she broke my heart in a couple of places. Um, there's a, a part where she's screaming at her mother like, leave me alone, leave me alone. And I, I damn near turned into an audience member while I was in the scene with her because she was so captivating. <laughs> she's, she's great. I can't wait to see what she does next. Yeah. When, when you were their age, do you, did, you, did you know this is what you wanted to do? Were you, had you already decided that this was gonna be your, your path? Yes, I had decided that probably at four years old. Yeah. But you're in the right area uh, of the world as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but when it came time to tell my parents, like, this is really what I want to go for, they were not thrilled and not supportive. And so that kind of sidelined me for many years because I was trying to figure out what else to do. And I was unhappy because none of it, I didn't have a passion for anything. So I didn't really get started in earnest until I got married and moved out of the house because my husband was the only one that was like, yeah, I think you can do it. And that's, then we were off to the races yeah. and it seems to be working out. 
Yeah, it's not going too badly. <laughs> <laughs> so this was, um, I, th- I thought you because obviously d- having done comedy and stuff in the past, I'm sure you've been involved in many situations where they've relied on improvisation or given you the kind of freedom to do that. Was that the right. case at all in, in Blush? Because it felt like such a natural performance. There were times, maybe it's just a credit to how good you were, where I couldn't feel or see the script in any way. And I just wondered if you were given that, that sort of freedom here. I don't remember necessarily doing a lot of improvisation. Um, The script was pretty tight, but working with those actors and having no real rehearsal time, it seemed like improv because the way they would perform things was such a surprise to me. Because, you know, you can read something on the page when you're reading another character's lines, and it's a completely different ballgame to hear them say it and hear what they bring to it. So while there was no actual improv, it felt like we were improvising at times. Because so I mentioned your sort of comedic roles in the past. I mean, sometimes actors can only really go where the roles are. I mean, it is a job after mm-hmm. all. And, and you've been offered your fair share of comedically inclined roles. As mm-hmm. brilliant as you are in their roles, are you quite pleased to get the chance to show off another side to your skill set in this, in this film? Yeah, thrilled. I love it. I love it, love it. And... Um, you know, I've probably done more drama than people realize, but um, yeah, I am mostly known for comedy and that's fine too. I have no problem with that. As long as I get to keep working, I'm, I'm very happy. But this was, this was um, a real gift and, and I was really pleased when I saw the final cut. And when we got to go to Sundance because of it, I was, I felt like, oh, I'm hanging with the cool kids. Finally, you know. <laughs> I've no, I've still never been to Sundance. I've never hung with the cool kids. <laughs> one day, one day. Um, obviously, you've been a part of the Goldbergs for an incredibly long time now. Mm. Looking back, because I was just look, looking at, thinking about it today, it's been such a big part of your life. I mean, that must be one thing. I mean, as yeah. much as you, it must be great to do a film like Blush, where you you give this kind of like a couple of months to something, you give everything you've got and you love it and you might go to festivals. To have this running character that runs through years, it must almost make it like a a family member to you. Oh yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I, I, all those people are in my DNA now. Every crew member, every single person involved, I, um, I consider them my extended family. And yeah, I mean, we're about to finish our eighth season. So like, I know everybody's backstory. I know everybody's family, all their pets. It's, um, it's the best job I've ever had. And every day I'm grateful that I get to wake up and go there, you know, and it is eight months out of the year that I get to spend with them. You know, when we were on lockdown and not working, I was heart sick. Do you have like a Goldberg's WhatsApp group? (laughs) <laughs> no we don't but you uh you bring up a good, <laughs> a good uh point we should <laughs> yeah. so i mean obviously you mentioned the eighth season i mean there's 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 still an audience demand is this something that could go to a ninth to a tenth is, is, there, is there do you, i mean obviously i'm sure that's things out of your control but while the yeah. audience still want it is there do you reckon there's still that that desire to to still continue making it yeah i think um we could go as long as it makes sense. Like I'll, I'll do it forever. Yeah. No, I won't. <laughs> I'll do it until people are tired of me wearing that wig. But um, I think we could go to 10 easily because a lot of people discovered us on lockdown and they binged it. So now our audience has grown even more around the world And quite honestly, that family, they're all still alive and out in the world causing havoc. So there's still stories to be told. And, um, you know, it would be an honor. It would be an honor to keep going. What would you say uh, you get recognized for most? Because, I mean, the Goldbergs is obviously something you've been in for a number of years, but when you get sort of stopped in the street, what's the most kind of common, the common cause for that? (laughs) You know, it's... It's not what you would think necessarily. I I get recognized for Reno. 
I get recognized for Bridesmaids. And I get recognized for a show that I was a guest star on called Rules of Engagement, <laughs> where I played like a crazy cat lady that was always stalking David Spade's character. I get recognized for that a lot. Um, and the Goldbergs, but yeah. that's the one that, that really kind of surprises me. I didn't realize that many people saw that show. Now, I'm not going to call you a crazy cat lady, but am I right in thinking you yes. do have a few cats? I have six. Six cats. Well, it must be nice. Yes. That must be on the one kind Seven of Seven is crazy. Seven, Seven is crazy. Yeah. Six is <laughs> just the right amount. Just the right amount. Um, yeah. Yeah, but if you get a seventh, we'll just up that to eight. But because that, that was one of the perks to to the like last year in lockdown, I guess you've got to spend a bit yeah. of time at home, which is probably quite yeah. unusual, I guess, in, in your job. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, there were times when it was like, oh, this is nice. I can nest. I can clean out cupboards. And then other times like I'm wasting my life. What's next? This is crazy. My cats don't want to look at me anymore. They're tired of me. My husband's tired of me. <laughs> well, on that note, I've just, <laughs> I've got, I was just going to ask you one last question before I go, because I've just gone over time slightly. But, but you, made, you obviously just mentioned bridesmaids before. Am I right uh -huh. thinking that your ma management at the time thought that might be a flop? And how satisfying is it still to this day that it was anything but? <laughs> oh, it's extremely satisfying. <laughs> um, yeah, and that gave me the strength to leave that manager um, who I don't think is managing anymore, but he's still in the business. I think he is um, a money guy or something like that. But yeah, that, that was very satisfying because we really didn't know how that was gonna go, how that was gonna be received. And um, the new film that Kristen Wiig and Annie Mumolo have just released together, Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar, it's such a weird little movie and people are liking it. It's one of those things where it's like, it, it kind of unfolds slowly in your mind after you watch it and you're like, oh my gosh, did I hear that? Was there actually a singing crab? So I, <laughs> like, it, it's just, um, it's satisfying when someone takes a gamble on themselves and their own creativity and, and they win. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was, Fine. anyway i can't wait to see it it looks really <laughs> funny <laughs> really, really good. Uh, but thank you so much for your time today much appreciated thank you um, i've got another interview after this i'm going to try and sort this lamp out and try not to look like i've got <laughs> a demon behind me trying to uh but yeah thank you so much <laughs> best of luck with the release and i'll hopefully one day we'll be able to do something like this in person you know ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice Hey!